Hello and welcome to Tonalist Painting with M. Francis McCarthy. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy, and welcome as well to day 18 of 25 Days of Tonalism, Volume 2. The painting we are doing today is called Wooded River Landscape by John Francis Murphy. And it looks like we're clearly missing the drawing stage. And I hate to say it, but I think we're missing some of the final finishing stage. But don't worry too much about it, because I have to say 80, 90% of the painting is done in that first uh, color pass. So we're OK. Now, if I was missing that, I would have to redo the painting or the video or uh, something else, because that really is the meat of the painting. Generally, the uh, the drawing stage doesn't take me very long. Um, I don't know. It could be uh, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. It depends. It depends on uh, the complexity of the scene, how big it is, and things like that. But um, I don't spend a ton of time uh, on that drawing slash underpainting stage. I just like to have something there um, to kind of support me while I'm doing the art. Also, it's kind of... Uh, laying in the the darks the first stage of the darks uh too so anyway um today is saturday here in new zealand and it is september 23rd i have been in the studio working today um ben actually has a stack of uh five by seven some of them quite old um that i've been revising um pumping up um I don't know, just kind of bring them into 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 line with uh, where I'm at these days. Uh, they've had their time in the box, or even in the uh, in some of them cases have, have been in galleries, but uh, didn't sell or something. So they've come back, and uh, every now and again I like to get into things and revise things. I really haven't done a big push on five by sevens for a long time. Usually it's the uh, larger paintings. Last year I did a bunch of 8x8s eight and 8x10s. Eight uh, I guess it's time for the 5x7s this year and uh, uh, looking good. I mean uh, a couple things I've done and, and one thing that I always wanted to kind of play with. I've done it on about uh, two or three of these is uh, a technique that George Ness used to do where he would take uh, his painting and basically rub the whole thing down with a glaze of burnt uh, sienna and uh and then paint it back up again and uh i have to say that really brings the the tonalist uh, feeling across like you wouldn't believe i mean it really socks it in there um it does have a, a, a darker quality no question about that um but uh it's i've been pretty happy with it i may actually lay my hand on a few of the ones i've done that way um again just to Add a little more pop in the sky. I like to have a generally an area in the sky that's fairly bright. If things are too muted, um, in fact, I, ha I guess I have to say one of the the big places I I, I think I improved uh, looking at some of these old paintings is like, you know, I knew tonalism was more muted, and so I kept everything kind of muted down and avoided areas of intense contrast. Uh, my darks weren't that dark and my lights weren't that light and that can be nice or it can be kind of blah and so um, one of the first things I'm doing is just darkening the darks and then uh, that's all, all already a big improvement and um, uh, of course redoing most of these skies and that's a very interesting process as well since I don't have any reference and uh, I'm kind of just you know um, sort of working what's there with what's there but in some cases it's almost like I'm just relying on uh, muscle memory of all the multitude of skies I've painted in the past and intuition and the other thing I would say I've been sort of relying on is uh, because I'm nearsighted I wear glasses uh, I, I can take off my glasses and have a sort of a blurred overview of the painting and I tend to do that when I feel a little lost and uh, not not sure what to do because um, it just gives me like I said a, a kind of a broader 
more general um, way of looking at things and I can uh, work from there and uh, now I do use actually I have a specialized prescription just for painting it's awesome actually I have to say uh, normally I wear like uh, you know I have trifocals <laughs> because I'm old <laughs> and uh, you know they're okay for general everyday in and out stuff but uh, lots of work on the computer or at the easel and um, it's a bit of a strain trying to just find that that narrow band and the uh, trifocal that is going to uh, accommodate what it is I'm trying to do so I have a prescription that's basically a pair of bifocals and the doesn't do far distant objects just medium distance uh, to very close and uh, in fact, I just got a new prescription. I have to say it's awesome. It's been great. And uh, there's nothing like being able to see clearly when you're working. Uh, in fact, if you have a prescription and, uh, you know, like me, uh, you've got the near side and the far side thing going, um, definitely talk to your optometrist about giving you a specialized pair of uh, glasses uh, just for desktop work or painting. And uh, you, I, I guarantee you'll be really glad you did. Um, I probably got my first pair like that about, oh, I don't know, four or five years ago, and uh, it's been awesome. And uh, just better and better, actually, as I get better and better prescriptions. But anyway, that's an aside. Uh, this week's been pretty active, uh, except for painting. I've had uh, to prepare some, uh, some stuff, a lot of which was in the uh, museum show. Um, I was heading out to a show in Philadelphia. Um, with my rep and a friend Cliff, he's taking that out there, and uh, hopefully, uh, if you're in the states, you're anywhere near Philadelphia. I know there's going to be a show in October. As I get uh, more specifics, I, I'll, I'll try and pass that on. Um, but it's it's exciting, and also maybe an upcoming show in Boston as well, which I'm really excited about, since that's basically the home of tonalist art. Uh, New York also, but Boston first, and I think Boston, it's kind of hung in there um, in some way, shape, or form down uh, from the last, you know, 120 years or so. So that's going on. Uh, I had to do a bunch of framing and uh, paper backing and uh, filling out of certificates and things like that. And uh, also I have a new um, gallery on board here in Fongaray called Burning Issues, which I'm real excited about because... Uh, it's being run by a lady I've worked with for years at another gallery who's really, really good. And um, Burning Issues is actually in the what they call the hub, which is the uh, the main uh, tourist area here in town. And so she gets a lot of traffic there. And uh, so that's good because, you know, we've got to... Uh, well, it's not enough just to do paintings. You've got to get them out in the world and uh, get them in people's homes, you know. Um, unless uh, of course that's not your thing uh, in which case maybe you can you know just stick them under the bed or something I don't know uh, one of the things that I um, I set her up with was some of these uh, pardon me little three by threes and three and a half by fives that I've been doing one three and a half by five two three by threes uh, been work working on trying to figure out a little easel back for it uh, can't say I've really succeeded all that well but you know they're out there and we're, we keep experimenting and uh, I did some so, so of course I had to do photography on these three by threes and uh, I have to tell you I just you know I have a really big monitor here and it's nothing like just seeing that thing blown up you know 20 inches high <laughs> by 20 inches a three by three that's blown up that big you just see the gestural uh, nature of the brushwork and uh, I, I really like it I'm, I'm, I'm actually um, pretty big on these right now so um, we'll see how um, that goes going in the future I I am planning on doing at least eight of the three by threes and after the th after that I plan on moving into a three and a half by three and a half I think that's a little better and I think I mentioned that um, so sorry if I repeat myself folks you know that's just the nature of uh, hanging out with somebody you know you tend to hear them uh, repeat themselves but uh, it's all good right um, what else is going on 
it, doing some texturizing still on the boards. Like I said, it's been a, s a rough week in the studio for actually doing a lot of paintings. I I um, don't know if I mentioned this, but I had uh, some that, that I painted were on boards that were just too heavily textured. So what I decided to do last week was just to I had my sandpaper block and I just sanded the heck out of them and. Uh, uh, of course, uh, revealing lots of uh, dark bits of the ground uh, beneath the uh, painted, uh, color painted surface, um, which I went in and uh, did a second pass that was a bit more impasto than I might do usually. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the way those have turned out. They're still a little too heavily textured. Oh, yeah, uh, we got just one minute left here. Um, the other thing I played with was some uh, matte varnish. Uh, which I got from Gamelin. It's the Gamasol. No, Gamasol is the uh, the medium. It's their Gamvar, excuse me, matte varnish. Works really, really well. It's a little weird for me not seeing that, that satin finish that I really like, but given how heavily textured they are, I think it's a better way to go. Anyway, I guess we're getting close to the end here. Thanks for joining me today. If you like my videos, please subscribe. I really appreciate it when people do that. And also, you can go to my website, landscapepainter.co.nz. You can follow the blog through there. There's going to be a higher resolution image of this painting on the blog you can check out. And I will be back tomorrow uh, with another one of my own paintings. I might even cram in one of these little texture 3x3s. So meanwhile, take good care and stay out of trouble.